Hey guys, back here with another video. This time I'm going to talk about uh, selecting a computer for photo and video editing and, in my opinion, which would be the best options for you. So, pretty much we have four things to consider for a graphics and video editing computer. And this is going to apply to any platform, as, as I'll discuss. So, one is the processor. And pretty much faster and more cores, the better. And I'd recommend at least an i5 or higher. i7 quad core recommended. Of course, a Xenon 12 core is desired, but they do go up in price. So, for depending on what you want to do, look at the processor speed. And that should be one of the, because pretty much the processor does most of the heavy lifting in terms of the, the core processes. The video card does, you know, it'll offload heavier workloads in video rendering and maybe high-end graphics, but generally the processor will take the blunt of the most of the everyday heavy lifting. The second would be an SSD hard drive. And SSD drives for, are faster for startup and access times are much quicker. And they're going to be, they're the solid state drives. There are no moving parts, so they're going to run cooler and they're generally access speeds faster than the traditional spindle type hard drives. Like you see hard drives that say, you know, 5400 or 7200 RPM rotations per minute. So basically, if you see that, it's going to be the traditional magnets and spinning. There's something spinning inside there and that's going to take up more space for one thing they're usually slightly larger but they take up more power they create more heat and their their access times aren't aren't as fast as the ssds and i would recommend at least a pcie based ssd and those are little the newer generation chips that actually plug right into the pcie slots so the access time is going to be even faster than your traditional old school i shouldn't call them old school ssds are that haven't been around that long but than your traditional SATA connectors. And then we got the RAM, or the random access memory. And pretty much more and faster memory, the better. And then in here, it's not, your performance gains aren't gonna be exponential. So if you have like a two gig versus four gig, it's not gonna double your performance. Four to eight, it's not gonna increase it that much. But it does make a difference. And the RAM, I liken the RAM to kind of like uh, your working memory, so you can have either more applications running simultaneously or the uh, the software doesn't have to keep asking the hardware, hey, you know, I need more resources, you know. The RAM is kind of like a, a pre-cached workspace, I guess, the best way to describe it. And then, of course, a dedicated video graphics card to offload the heavy lifting for rendering heavy photo edits and 4K rendering is a must. At least a 2 gig and 8 gig or more desired, of course, but a lot of these graphics cards, NVIDIA or GeForce or ATI, they're pretty good. Those are the two big names in the uh, company. And graphics cards, they're not necessarily uh, needed for basic photo editing, but if you're going to do a lot of layers and renderings and things to that nature, if you're using multiple uh, filters or what have you, then they may take it, but pretty much it uses the, the uh, cores on your uh, processor. But if you're doing video editing, especially 4K graphics cards, that's where they come into their own. Doing 1080 editing definitely be you know helpful, but on a 4K, I, in my opinion, it's almost a must. So if you plan on doing 4K video editing, definitely get a standalone graphics card. A lot of the computers come with uh, what they call integrated discrete graphics that are built right onto the chip, and they're good for everyday things, but you probably want a more dedicated graphics card per se to do you know, any serious 4K editing. Next category is laptop or desktop. To be or not to be. So basically, laptops are becoming more popular just because they are more portable. And that's their, the biggest trick, I think, in my opinion, is their portability. Take your work on the go. For photo editing using Photoshop, laptops are fine. Most laptops will do. Even high-end laptops will even be better, but they are good laptops. And some convertible tablets do pretty good for photo editing, but when it comes to 4K video, they may lag behind their desktop counterparts. And that's because of the physical space constraints inside of a laptop. You're not able to jam a lot of scaled-on technology that you can on a desktop. So because of their size and the heating 
heat mitigation issues too because the you know, surface area is smaller, it, it will get hotter. And as it gets hotter, it'll throttle down the processor and things start slowing down. Desktops. So the all-in-one desktops are generally good for, as well, for photo editing and some basic video editing chores, but rendering 4K video files be sluggish compared to the desktop tower slash workstations. But they do come at a price. The convenience comes at a price, and it is the... It's, it's kind of like a uh, laptop on steroids. It's just bigger display with it all integrated. Minus the keyboard and mouse, of course. And on the Mac side would be like the iMac. Same idea, although the iMac is not touchscreen. If that thing was touchscreen, that would be a killer machine. But anyway, yeah, so they're they're pretty good. The all ones are good for you know for photo editing, Photoshop use, and basic 4K. But if you want to do heavy 4K rendering, you may want to step up to the desktop tower slash workstations, and those are the ones you know that sit on the floor, sit sit next to you, on the uh, separate from the monitor. I guess I just say there's no monitor connected to that. And they offer the most expandability to fit your needs. So higher end motherboards, chipsets, processors, and expandability makes this category of computers well suited for high end graphics editing as well as 4K editing. That's because you have a lot more, so physically you have more space. So more space, you can put more components in and you can put larger components and more. So you can do bigger processors, bigger uh, you know, motherboards that even support dual processors higher end processors and faster memory so right there and you can you know sky is the limit guys you can spend twenty thirty thousand dollars on some of these rigs but now you're getting up into the you know the high-end professional grade so if you make a living off of video editing and time you know time is money and if you can afford it try to get as much much as you can afford because the, the money you spend up front in the gear will probably save you time in rendering, which will allow you to do more projects, which will in turn allow you to make more money, theoretically. Um, but yeah, so desktops by their their nature to design run cooler than their laptop counterparts and, uh, and also the, th the all-in ones as well, which translates into better performance since the processor can run at its stated speed before throttling down due to heat buildup. So Macs out of the box are, are generally more user-friendly but at a cost. So for the same money, you can get more computing power from a PC, and that's always been true because of the, I don't want to say the closed architecture of the Macs, but no one else makes Macs. Once upon a time, I think back in the day, they toyed with the idea of having Mac clones, but I think Steve Jobs put a kibosh to that because he didn't have the quality control that he, he could by making it all, all in-house. And there's something to be said about that. So Macs, especially back in the day, they use premium products, premium components, and is controlled by one company, whereas PCs are made all over the board. You know, there's different companies making them, different components, although, although, Macs also use third-party components inside there. All the components are not made by Mac. They're just, you know, hand cherry-picked. And once upon a time, they used to use high-end components for all their stuff, but now I'm not sure. But that's just my opinion. So the quality control, like I said, in industrial design sets Macs apart from their PC counterparts. However, that too is slowly changing because PC companies are getting wise. You know, some of these boutique, uh, especially the gaming rigs, they're pretty high end and they, you know, handpick their components as well. They're pretty sweet. So Macs used to be considered the de facto go-to choice when it came to creative projects for photo, video, and audio editing back in the day. And that's just because out of the box they worked. You know, they were designed for that. Max, you look, you know, there's no, you won't see Max on Wall Street or, in a, or much in a business world, but you'll see a lot of Max used, you know, in like uh, video or photo suites, studios and audio engineering, some of them. But now, you know, they're with, with the cost of PC and the power going up, that's slowly changing as well. So if you prefer the Mac operating system and their unique form factor, then the Mac is for you. I mean, I have nothing against that. They're great. They look great. Their industrial design is second to none. So if you're running, you know, if you want to run Final Cut Pro, their video editing software is actually designed to take full advantage of the Mac hardware with pretty impressive results. So if, if you like Final Cut Pro and you can run, I have seen, you know, 4K video being rendered really quickly on a MacBook Pro using Final Cut Pro because of the uh, programming and the infrastructure designed to take advantage, full advantage of that. 
but if you run Adobe Premiere, it may not have the same results. The iMac, for example, the iMac 5K, the one specced out around 4,000 bucks is pretty nice. And that's the one I'm actually considering. So you're getting, you're getting a you know, 4K plus monitor built in with your computer. It is kind of spendy, but it is an all-in-one, and I've been really looking at that. I wish that was touchscreen, though. That would be really awesome. And of course, you have the Mac Pro, you know, which I call the garbage can form factor. It's not a garbage. It just kind of reminds me of like a trash can, and I'm sure other people have mentioned it that way. That's pretty nice. But limited expandability compared to their PC counterparts with the older form factor design limits future expandability. But a fully specced out model is pretty sweet at a price. Yeah, that design is a few years old. They haven't really upgraded it. And because of its physical size, your, your expandability options are limited in that way. And you do pay for a premium, but it is pretty sweet. It's a pretty cool design. It doesn't take up a lot of room. You can fit it in your backpack. It's pretty nice. But again, for that's for a high-end, like a fully specced out Mac, MacBook, or a Mac, <laughs> for a fully specced out Mac Pro, you can get a pretty nice PC setup. Final thoughts. A high-end laptop will do most chores, even 4K video editing. But of course, at the cost of heat buildup. For the same money, you can get a more powerful desktop variety, as always has been the case. And because of the laptop is a one-trick pony, and that trick, and does pretty well, is you can fold it up and take it with you. You get a monitor, keyboard, mouse, processor all in one. And that's where the advantage ends, unfortunately. So for around 2500 bucks, minus the 4K monitor, of course, you can get a pretty capable desktop PC to tackle both intensive photo editing chores as well as everyday, photo, everyday 4K video editing. That's pretty much the sweet spot in terms of bang for your buck. So as you pay more, you don't necessarily get twice the performance. The gains are not exponential. So keep that in mind. So when you, you start paying more, yes, it's going to be faster performance, but is it going to be twice? So if you spend twice the amount of money, are you going to get twice the performance? No way. And as you get higher and higher, the diminishing returns get less and less. So I recommend at least an i7 quad-core processor or at least 512 SSD PCI-based hard drive with 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM and a dedicated graphics card with 4 gigs of memory on board. Of course, a dual, dual Xenon processor with 44 cores and one terabyte of DDR5 RAM with dual, with dual 12 gig video cards and four six terabyte PCIe SSD, SSD drives would be awesome, guys. One can only dream, right? So you can buy pre-built systems, which takes the hassle out of you having to pick each component and install them yourselves. And that ensures reliability, or you can save some bucks and assemble your own. You can save a lot of money, but you really have to know what you're doing. You have to know the hardware, software compatibility issues, and make sure that it's fully functional. So most brick and mortar stores like your Best Buys and your whatevers, they, they'll have like low to medium range computers that'll satisfy most photo editing needs. So there you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video and uh, see you next time. Bye.